Okay, so this is a common problem. Deducing a rate law from initial reaction rate data. And the format's always the same. When you um, have a problem like this, make sure I'm red, you're given some concentration of some reactant A and some reactant B and then rate, okay? In trial one, two, three, and four. Sometimes the rate will be this column over here or whatever, okay? But this is always the same. And recall now, that uh, what we're doing is we're looking for the rate law and the form of the rate law is going to be something like rate is equal to k times a raised to the x b raised to the y right and we could do this just if you if you were super super crystal clear on exponents and fractions and multiplication and such uh, logarithms you you know you could you could figure out how to do this uh, I was not that clear, still probably not that clear on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow some method, which I demonstrated to you in class. But the method's going to go like this. Um, first of all, let me add another layer here. Let me add another layer. I'll go to this layer. I think I want to bring this up here. Yeah, so if I write in this, and I disappear that, yeah, it's still there. Okay, great. So what I want to do is I want to first of all take any two trials where these two you see how in trial uh, in trials one and two actually that's trial one two and three these were just the headings right in trials one and two uh, reactant A was not changed at all right so the way I taught this in class was I said the rate is equal to K a x b y right and in this in this case in trial two the same is true right now if these are both true then we can say that the ratio of the rates is equal to the ratio of these expressions agreed so we'll call that trial one this trial two this is k one k two one two, one, and two, right? The concentrations of A and B in one and two respectively, right? So we know that K is a constant, so I can just cancel those out because those are gonna be equal, agreed? And we also know that if we chose a trial where A does not change, then these are also equal, right? So those will cancel. So you see we can conveniently uh, calculate what B is because B does change and the rate changes. So what we're seeing here is the effect of uh, the effect of the change of initial concentration of B. So I'm going to rewrite this as B1, B2, Y, right? Pull the Y out is equal to, to that number right there. You see what I'm doing here? And so if we were going to do this with logarithms, which I think we can do without, but we would simply say then the log of rate 1 over rate 2, can I call that R1 and that R2 to keep things simple, is equal to, watch, the log of B1 over B2 raised to the Y, right, which is going to equal to Y log B1 B2, right, so you see you pull that exponent down. That's really the trick that we're doing here. Now, oftentimes these can be done intuitively. So let me go back to red here and say that this right, these and this is x. You see, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm rewriting it, except I'm putting I'm using this uh, concept and putting it over here, and I'm using the table to make my to make my math. So I don't have to write this all out. Well, it just cancels, right? because it's just one raised to the x. What, no matter what x is, that's just going to go to one. My k is already canceled. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, what is 9, 0.193 over 0.353? Okay, what is this number there? I'm going to use it in my calculator. I don't have uh, Alex up right now uh, for reasons which are complicated. Not now, but I'm going to say 0.193 divided by 0.353 is equal to 0.5467. So this goes to be, um, can I bring this math down here? This goes to be equals 
0 0.5467, right? That's what that is. That's that ratio. Now let's do 2.09, 2.09 divided by 3, oops, 2.09 divided by 3.82 is equal to 0 0.5. 471 0 0.5471 now I can and this is raised to the y now I could do this with logarithms like I showed you here in the black okay however I can see that these are the same number I can see clearly that y is equal to 1 can you see that y has to be 1 if these two are equal to each other right okay so obviously they're not exact, right? But there's they're li they lie within the limits of uh, uh, precision that were that we were we had access to based upon the measurements that we took. Okay, so y is equal to one. Therefore, y is equal to one. So I now know that this is first order with respect to b. All right, so let's go now to a new uh, layer. Let's get rid of this one and let's do the same with x. I'm going to go with a different color. Let's go with green. Okay? So an X, oh no, this is, yeah, I'm going to compare these two trials. You see that? Where B does not change here. So I'm going to pretend like I don't see that, and that's going to be my fraction there, right? Can you see that? Pretend like you don't see trial two. I don't see that. It's going to equal. Can you see a fraction there? This is 2.09 over 2.09 raised to the y, we already know y is 1. I'm going to cross this off. This is going to come to 0 0.84 over 4.0, right? Raised to the x is going to give me 0 0.193 over 4.4. I'm going to go ahead and calculate these out. 0.84 divided by 4 equals 0 0.21. 0 0.21 raised to the x gives me 0.193 divided by 4.4 is equal to. That doesn't seem right. I gotta do that again. Nope, I did that wrong. 1.9. No, it's 0 0.193. 0 0.193 divided by 4.4. Ah, this is my problem over here. 0.84 divided by 4 is not 0 0.21. 0 0.84 divided by 4 is equal to... Yeah, it is 0.21. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. So 0 0.21, 0 0.193 divided by 4.4 .4 is equal to 0 0.043. I do have to use logs here. 0.04386. Eight, six. I can't do that in my head. What? 0 0.21 raised to the what gives that? I don't know. Probably, probably two, but I can't do that in my head. So I'm going to come over here. I'm getting confused now, right? It's going to be x is equal to log of 0 0.04386. X is going to equal to log of 0 0.04386 divided by log of 0 0.21, right? So I'm going to do those two logs in my calculator right now. Log base 10 is minus 3.5. Six, seven, seven, eight, and I can see, yeah, that's going to be two. This is also a negative. I can see, I can see uh, that that's going to be um, two, right? But I'm going to do it anyway times 1.3579. Equals, yeah, 2.0034. Okay? So it comes out to be about 2. All right? All right, there we have it then. So the rate is going to equal to A to the 2 
b to the 1, okay? Well, a is that. So I'm going to go further. This is, uh, I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to get rid of that, make a new one, and say that the rate is equal to k squared h2. All right. Now, these questions are always the same thing. It's buried here. Now, it's this is the rate law, and I'm going to write that right here. That was the answer for that. But the second question, and you can't see it from where we're sitting here, the second question is always, what is k? Well, I can solve for k. This is the, this is the answer for part a. Okay? You see, that's right there. Now, but I can solve for k, of course, by saying it's the rate over n2 squared h2. And it would, I could use any of these three trials to give me the right answer. So I'm going to use the first one, 0 0.193 over 0 0.84 squared times 2.09. Okay, and that's going to give me K. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut it off here and say, um, I'm going to cut it off here now and say that that has been demonstrated. All right. I suggest if this doesn't make a lot, if you think you get this, then consider watching this video again and pausing it and jumping ahead and seeing if you get the same thing that I got. Um, and otherwise, uh, please come to me uh, for more questions or, or more examples. All right. Best wishes.